What was your country doing during World War II? 1. Trying to survive the Soviet invasion. 2. Trying to get revenge on the Soviets by helping the Nazis. 3. Fighting the Nazis. Also, the white line at the edge of the platform in the UK is from WW2 because of the blackout people couldn't always see the edge of the platform so would fall in front of trains, so a white line was added. Yes, friend of mine dragged me to a show of theirs in mid-2001 and said they were going to change rock. I was like haha sure going in but was a believer coming out of the show that night, listening to is the sit on its 20th anniversary date right now. Tantalized by the cockroach and its promise, I fantasized about soaring with golden wings, flying with gold wings, Hypnotized by the cockroach and its promise I was compromised by a treasure that was fit for fools, lured by a fool's gold. The hunter draws closer to its prey. Vacantly I was gazing at the mirage I yearned to be an apostle of the self-made man hopelessly I bathed in my ignorance desperately toking on the roach of irony. My fickle fortune beckoned a treasure fit for fools. The hunter draws closer to its prey. I blindly wandered down the golden path in pursuit of a misbegotten dream. The great Gatsby whispered in my ear. The road from rags to riches leads nowhere. The grand illusion beckoned with promises of deceit. The cockroach king sits on his throne with the Midas touch and a heart of stone. An empire built on gall and greed. A bleeding ground for those who heed. The grand illusion faded the hunter snares its prey, I fear and loathe the cockroach the mirage melts away. The cockroach king sits on his throne with the Midas touch and a heart of stone an empire built on gall and greed a bleeding ground for those who heed, lured by a treasure that was fit for fools, searching for the truth, lost in this labyrinth in search of the truth, with your promises of deceit, trapped in your kingdom built on greed and guile built on greed and guile, only to find the insects have multiplied. The cockroach king of guile and dread with a broken crown he's left to bleed an empire falling to its knees a bleeding ground for those who heed. I long to be a disciple of the cockroach, blinded by the grand illusion. I was hopelessly, blackened wings to fly, the roach of irony, choking on the roach of fallacy thankfully, burning ashes of the hunter. Actually when long to be a disciple, when the mirage finally melted the impurity, scattered in the sky, flying with black wings, of the cockroach was revealed to me. My dad and I listened to Green Day together and went to their concerts when I was in high school, and then he died suddenly when I was 16 so dot 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 pretty sure I'm never going to be able to say anything different even though I don't really listen to them anymore. That unplugged album was magical, one of the greatest of all time. When Lane Staley comes walking out during Nutshell and proceeds to enter a different dimension and sing those songs into reality was, like I said, magical. Ed, a fellow Reddit user pointed out that on this exact date, July 30th, in 1996 the unplugged album was released. There was that magic from another dimension again. I find it incredible, he looks like he's 24 hours from hospitalization but still that voice comes out of his awkward and well body. Some people just have a talent that shines through any of life's bullshit. I feel like we didn't hear anywhere enough of Lane but fuck am I grateful for what we got. Came to say this, had some truly dark days in my time. And no one taps that war of sorrow like Lane and Jerry. They played heavier than everyone else in grunge, but harmonized like a folk band. And that's not to dismiss Sean and the Mikes, cause they could fucking play too. They wrote hauntingly dark lyrics that blew everyone else out of the water most of the time. They couldn't fucking miss. Alice in Chains is the soundtrack for the weary. And even the reincarnation with William is heavy and raw to this day. Aig forever. Same. I was vaguely familiar with them a few years ago. I like to run in the mornings before work, and I was in a huge mastodon phase at the time. I was using YouTube and Gojira was in the related videos. 
So I thought, hey why not? Flying whales, I'm running and the sun is building and then I'm running harder and my mouth is just open for a few long seconds because I'm blown away with what I'm hearing, I mean instantly hooked. I downloaded FW immediately and just kept it on repeat for the better part of two or three days. Once I came down from that, it was Ocean Planet, fucking mind blown again. How had I missed this band? Why hadn't I listened to them sooner? What am I doing with my life? Exclamation mark. They're my go-to for a lot now. Need to motivate it. 8. Gojira. Bored. Gojira. Drawing. Gojira. Going out to mow my yard. Mastodon plus Baroness plus Iron Maiden plus a massive beginning dose of Gojira. They're just fucking rad as hell. I like him a lot. Yup sound garden. Then audio slave and solo work. Don't know why I gravitate to his music, definitely my most favorite songwriter. Honestly didn't surprise me when he passed. I knew one day it would come. The only thing I could recall that day was remembering the line. No is gonna do me in before I do myself on blow up the outside world. I'm so glad I got to experience him live at least once. Evil Empire came out when I was around 11 and it changed how I viewed music. I read a quote once that said, The best part about Rage is that their music is still so relevant. The worst part about Rage is their music is still so relevant. Either way their energy was electric and raw, and I'll never forget the first time I heard Bulls on Parade as a kid. Watching people's reaction videos to them makes me smile that they're still being discovered. The way that album was produced made it so the end of lack of colors. The last track, ambient white noise would fade into the ambient white noise of the new year. The first track, seamlessly, needless to say, that album looped countless times on repeat on my old laptop, if fire I call. That album had several days worth of playtime in the old iTunes days. What a perfect album. Yes, my husband and I love them in large part for their lyrics. One time at a music festival where we had the chance to see them, Ben Jabbar said between songs, stay hydrated, be kind to one another. We laughed that it's kind of a great life philosophy so I later put it on a shirt for my husband. Bell and Sebastian, their songs are just so cozy. I love how distinct their old stuff is from the new, too. They're a band that have really evolved their sound without losing what makes them special. Or maybe the new pornographers, I can't decide. As a crazy fanboy, I have loads of favorites. Their latest super hit Deutschland is a real killer. Son is the best song to experience live, so it's hard to choose one. The song pop from their latest album is really creepy and disturbing. I'd say it's their most sinister song. And it does take a lot to get that spot ha ha ha. I think that's my favorite. Holy shit. Didn't think I'd see anyone else put them in this thread. I've been a fan of them since before I'm like a virgin losing a child came out or and somehow even thought their style has changed drastically. I still love everything they've put out. I've had telepaths stuck in my head for like the last two days. Andy Hall is a goddamn genius. Same, saw them six times, met Jesse after a show once and got my ticket stub signed. It got lost during a move one time and I basically never forgiven myself. Took a while to come to terms with finding out Jesse might not be the hero my teenage brain had built him up to be, and realized that I can still love the band's art without feeling the same way about Jesse. I'm 31 years old and they've been my favorite band since I was 14. They helped me get through all of my dark times. I still get goosebumps during songs I've heard countless times. I have plenty of other bands that I love, but none as much as brand new. I'll never forget the day I purchased OK Computer. I lay down on my bed and listened to it all the way through from beginning to end and almost cried. I came out of the bedroom and told my wife I just heard my generation's dark side of the moon. They have never disappointed since then. Their music transcends and have influenced so many. 
hijacking to repost my love of MCR. I know they get a lot of hate, but man I just love them, the core four, gender bending D&D enthusiast and vocalist Gerard Way, bassist and little brother Mikey Way, rhythm guitarist and pint-sized rage machine Frank Hierro, and of course the unforgettable guitar god that is Ray Toro are a fantastic story of a bunch of painfully uncool men who seemingly became a sensation overnight before fizzling out. They were the face of Hot Topic and Twilight and people hated it. They embraced it and rejected it at the same time. Therefore full studio albums are fantastic, in-depth, at times messy rock operas and if listened in order show the direct evolution of the band's talents plus. The Black Parade is the best 70s album of the 2000s. WTF I had to scroll way too long to find this. My first tattoo at age 17 was of the Alive Guy. I own every album and vinyl and CD. I have seen them live countless times. Their music legit saved me in high school. I am so fucking happy Eddie made it out unlike so many from that era. This is an amazing album, the song Jeremy is a gut punch for me as it is based on the true story of a 15 year old called Jeremy who killed himself in English class. Some background to me though, I am 46 now, I listened to all grunge and grew up through my teens and 20s along with UK bands like the Wild Hearts. Terra Eurovision and Ned's Atomic Dustbin. The Wild Hearts were my favorite band and went to at least four or five concerts per tour. Anyway in 2006 I had a serious mental health breakdown took me four years to have a breakthrough but all the bands from the 90s I grew up with I cannot listen to anymore as they send me down a spiral into my bad mental state. I deleted around 100 GB of MP3s and sold around 350 CDs just to get away from it all. I am still trying to find new music to listen to. At the moment I am listening to 60s stuff like CCR and others from that era. My mental state is fine at the moment but can go down without warning. Thank you all for taking time to read. I'm surprised how hard it was to find Arctic Monkeys. I think a lot of people don't realize how every album is extremely different. A lot of people just know the AM album, in the US, but their catalog is stellar. Alex Turner is one of the best lyricists alive, not quite Bob Dylan level, but definitely up there. Queen Every member of Queen was a musical freak of nature, Brian is a guitar god. Roger's drums complemented everything the other three did flawlessly, John Deacon's bass held it all together, and Freddie was obviously Freddie, and all of them wrote hits. Freddie obviously wrote a lot, Brian wrote The Show Must Go On, Roger wrote Radio Gaga, and DC wrote Another One Bites the Dust. I used to think Muse was alright, but then I went to a show where they played with 30 Second to Mars, who were extremely disappointing, fuck Jared Leto, and they put on an absolutely phenomenal live show that made me like the band even more. If you ever have the chance to see Muse live, please do so. AI saw both on the same tour. I liked both and went spontaneously. Totally agree with your take. Jared made my throat feel vicariously scratchy. Muse were so good. One of the best nights of my life. Despite having nosebleed seats, they were my first concert too, so they set the bar high for all future concerts sight and ha ha. <laughs> Royal Blood and Queens of the Stone Age are two of my favorite bands. Went to see the Cates of Villains tour when Royal Blood was opening for them, but Royal Blood hopped off the tour just a few stops before the show I went to. Huge bummer skeptical still waiting for RB to come back and play a show in the Seattle area. But I doubt it'll happen anytime soon. At this point I'd be willing to drive a long way to catch a show. My late husband's favorite band. We saw them live. I remember when he first discovered them he played no other bands for a solid month. At home. The truck. Everywhere all the time. Funny thing was years prior I'd occasionally play a favorite house Atlantic. The dark side of me was his favorite. Such a beautiful song. 
I love it too. Not a huge Slayer fan. They're great, I just don't listen to them much, but my first concert ever was a Slayer concert in Pittsburgh with my friend. I'll never forget we were tailgating waiting for the doors to open to the venue and this friendly fella came over to us. The concert hasn't even started yet and he'd already killed 12 beers and was visibly drunk. He punctuated every sentence by quietly going Slayer to himself. Aw oh, nice to see young kids are still into this kind of music man. Yay. Slayer, seemed like a cool dude I sincerely hope he didn't get alcohol poisoning. Imagine this, Slayer concert is over around 11 p.m. and a couple thousand fans are released onto the streets of Asheville NC. One person yells out fucking Slayer, then a couple thousand people start screaming fucking Slayer at the top of their lungs. Now imagine what the other people on the streets that had no idea that there was a Slayer concert that night were thinking. Genesis I was 15 and listening only to Top 40 Radio. Genesis had a minor hit. I liked it. For Christmas I asked for a bunch of LPs, and I included Genesis' self-titled album Genesis from 1983. My mom didn't really grok the idea of a self-titled album. She thought it meant just anything, buy any album. So she bought the one that looked prettiest to her. I was like WTF is this? and shelved it, didn't listen to it for months. Then one night, doing my homework, I was bored with all my other music and figured what the fuck. I finally took it out of its shrink wrap and put the album on. I want to sort of dot 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 make a list of the top 40 bullshit I was listening to and tell this, to give you some context. But honestly, it doesn't matter exactly what I was listening to. This album would have completely blown my mind no matter when I grew up. Nothing I'd ever heard sounded like this. It changed my life. Nowadays I'm listening to lots of stuff. Robert Glasper, Kamasi Washington, Tiner Iwan, Matt Zoe, Cut Copy, Jesse Ware, just about anything. But I always cycle back around to this stuff eventually. It will never leave me. Right on, Metallica is one of my all-time favorites. They were my first concert too when they were touring for Death Magnetic. Kicked so much ass. Brave of you to say they're your favorite. There seems to be a shitty rule in the metal community that you're not allowed to actually like Metallica ha ha but they're awesome, no matter what people say. I was going to write a long defending post, Metallica fucking rocks my socks off, hands down one of the most influential bands in the genre, and beyond, being my absolute favorite band for over 10 years now, ain't nothing wrong with a little Metallica, proud member of the family, there's so much more than the Black Album, y'all. I think metal snobs think they're just a vanilla answer for favorite band and are still salty about Lars being a douche. I'm not really a huge metal head but they just hit all the right buttons for me. And they absolutely kick ass live. I've seen them four times, once acoustic, and every show was insane. Queen. Every member of Queen was a musical freak of nature. Brian is a guitar god. Roger's drums complemented everything the other three did flawlessly, John Deacon's bass held it all together, and Freddie was obviously Freddie, and all of them wrote hits. Freddie obviously wrote a lot, Brian wrote The Show Must Go On, Roger wrote Radio Gaga, and DC wrote Another One Bites the Dust. Australia fought in campaigns against Germany and Italy and Europe, the Mediterranean and North Africa before eventually switching our attention to fighting the Imperial Japanese Army in Southeast Asia and the Pacific. This conflict with Japan lead to the only attacks on the country of Australia itself. The most infamous of those attacks happened on the 19th of February 1942 when Japanese warplanes dropped bombs on the city of Darwin, killing 235 people. There's an old WTF fact, which is something like how the first Allied shots of the World Wars were both fired near Melbourne, as when both wars started there were German ships in there and the Navy got the telegram and fired on them. 
I think one was a British ship actually that was mistaken for a German one. Most neutral countries distanced themselves from both parties, Sweden did the opposite and worked closely with both while making a fortune. We are also experts on efficiently being neutral while still putting our hands on the scales. I can understand why both sides were worried about Sweden's stance during the Cold War, because nobody knew where we stood.